Hey friends, Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video, to this channel, and to this world of healing, trauma, nervous system health, and all things neuroplasticity. One of the tougher things that I have um, worked with, that I've um, seen, that I have helped my clients through, is working with the, the concept, the reality of things that are horrific. So in other words, horror. And this might be kind of an odd topic to talk about, and yet it is something that I believe we need to understand even just a little bit so that when and if we should be faced with something that is horrifying, that is hard to see, hard to stomach, um, whether it is something that we experience personally or we see out there in the world, be it in real life, in nature, um, let's face it, accidents happen, things that we might see on the news, etc. So that if and when these events, these things that might be very horrific come in front of us, we do not shut down and we do not repress the survival response that we might have as living, breathing, empathetic, sensitive creatures that we are as human beings. And so um, I'm going to talk about a few things, um, but the first thing is just an overarching, um, how shall I say, a, a, a pleading, if you will, to really encourage you, if you have not yet started doing some of the basic practices of learning how to stay connected to the here and now, to your body, to the environment around you, uh, to your sensations and emotions, please start this process, whether it's through me, through my resources, whether it's through a really good somatic practitioner, practitioner. Um, I'll put some links below as to how to find practitioners, how you can work with me, etc. So the first thing is this overarching need to do the basic work. This is not all the work that needs to be done. Typically we have to process old, old traumas, old incidents and scary things that occurred to us. But just like learning a language, we have to start with the ABCs, the one, two, threes, getting a sense of what we're working with. And the reason why this is, is so important is because when we start to process and feel and see and experience things that are very intense, that are very almost hard to even fathom as possible, um, if we are not prepared as I mentioned a second ago, we will disconnect from our body. We may go into what's called the shutdown response, which is adaptive from a survival, from a survival point of view. However, we don't want to stay in that because when we stay in that and we aren't even aware that we're going into that, our nervous system, our autonomic nervous system, which we need, it starts to get a little confused in the process of shutting down and numbing out something that we just might not want to see or even comprehend, even though we might feel that it's mental, it is impacting our physiological systems. This is what we call a shutdown, freezing. Um, we could even say it is disconnecting and dissociating from our body, from the present moment, from reality. And while that has a purpose, as I said, initially to potentially numb us a little bit and save us from what we might be hearing, seeing, experiencing, we can't live like that. And this is what creates in the end, for example, PTSD. And for those of us that have unhealed early trauma, developmental trauma, it can lead to complex PTSD, as well as chronic illnesses, mental illnesses, etc. So, that's kind of my number one kind of beginning piece to this video is to get some of the basics on board. The second thing, when we think of something horrific, something really big and hard to um, stomach and swallow, is there might be alongside of this, um, the sidekick emotion disgust. Disgust. I've talked about disgust in other videos. Again, I'll pop some of those below if you want to follow this thread a little bit more. But disgust is, an, is a primal human mammalian emotion. It's that if you think about going into the refrigerator or garbage and you have a sniff of something that doesn't feel good, it's this ugh, yuck. There's this desire to want to sometimes dry heave. Maybe even there's a bit of sense of you're, we're going to vomit, like we're going to throw up. It doesn't feel good. It churns our stomach. 
And so again, um, I mentioned disgust because often it accompanies this sense of horror. Not always, but sometimes. It depends on our system, our history, um, the capacity we have to be with these big emotions. But I wanted to add that one in there because I will speak to that also. Now the next thing to understand with things that are really hard to see and grasp, and I mentioned a second ago, one of the default responses is for us to shut down. Typically before that occurs though, the system goes into a cascade of survival responses, one of them being fight, one of them being flight. And connected with that can be massive feelings, emotional feelings, even survival, very animalistic qualities, behaviors, actions that might, for some of us, if we've never done this kind of deep inquiry and feeling and sensing into, big, big expressions that might seem scary, that might seem like, holy moly, that's a lot. And um, I'm thinking about someone who I know who is a first responder out in the field, kind of like a, a firefighter, policeman, ambulance driver, that kind of person. And they have said, you know, they've seen really bad stuff. I mean, people die in accidents. People are not all together when they see on scene someone. And I'm not saying this to um, frighten you or to put bad images into your mind. And this is what occurs. And they have said to me that the way that they process these images, things that are horrific, in order to stay healthy and safe and not go down the road of getting PTSD after seeing these things day in, day out, they need to express what comes up the moment they lay eyes on what they see. And this could be massive screams. It could be this feeling of exactly what I said, disgust, dry heaving. There even might be a vomiting reaction that comes up. It could be just this intense rage to whatever it is that might need to come up. And as humans, we've been so reserved, right? We've been so protective of expression. Many of us don't want to think and feel and imagine that we are under, of course, all our human qualities. We are animals. We have this deep, deep feeling of things when we see things that are horrific, people being hurt and harmed. We're going to have a protective response and a visceral, visceral meaning our gut, our organs, our heart response to what we see. So if I think about this acquaintance and I think about how they have been able to stay really regulated in their job by letting that stuff rip, letting it out, of course, then that person has to go in to do their job, but they found that in while being able to get that out and get that expression out, they don't go into shutdown. They don't numb out. They're not staying looped in the images. It has to get out. So I say that to say, when and if something occurs where you see something horrific, or let's just say you have a memory from something long ago that was, and you kind of hit it inside, which again, it's not a bad thing. It's a protective strategy. But if we keep that inside and all of that massive emotion that never got to get out, if it stays inside, that becomes toxic in the system. We need to get it out. So. Again, I wish I could say to you, this is exactly what you have to do. These are the steps that are gonna go, that your system is gonna go through. I can't because everyone's different. Everyone's capacities are different and what people see and how they interpret that is going to depend on your own personal experiences, uh, the education that you've been given around such topics, um, et cetera, et cetera. True story. Um, when I was in grade, I'm not sure if it was 11 or 12, I uh, liked going to the library across from the high school that I went to. And something led me to find a book. Um, and I think the um, name of the book was called Satan's Children. I know a little haunt haunting. Um, and I'll, I'll link up that book if I can find it. What led me to find that book? I have no idea. Perhaps that was my guides preparing me for this time, this world that I live in where I am teaching people like you and I'm working with my clients who have experienced really horrific things. Um, but this book, Satan's Children, was written by, I think it was a psychologist or a psychiatrist, I can't quite remember. 
and they specialized in working with clients who had what we then called were multiple personality disorders, or now it's DID, Dissociative Identi Identity Disorder, DID. And all of his patients, because um, this was his specialty, had experienced, had lived through intense abuse in the form of ritual abuse, satanic cults, bad stuff that I don't even want to tell you about because there's no need for me to tell you the details, but it is intense stuff. Reading that book was a huge eye-opener. I was really young. I was fascinated with human psychology. Everything in my being knew that it wasn't a farce, that it wasn't fake, it was true. Listening to how these people had to cope, how they had to create multiple, called multiples in their, their brain, in their psyche, in their body to be able to withstand the horrific abuse that they survived. It was their adaptive strategy to stay sane, right? And so anyways, the reason I'm telling you about that book is I was given that opportunity to digest a little bit this kind of intensity that human beings face, that we subject living, breathing creatures to. Usually it's children and it's just horrible to think about, but it happens. Um, to back that up, some of the clients that I've worked with in my private practice, while well, I'm not in private practice now, I used to, um, these things are real. I've worked with folks who have lived through and survived such ritual abuse, satanic ritual abuse. Again, I know this is a strange topic, but I've seen it with my own, well, not seen it with my own eyes. I've heard it through people that I trust. I've read books about it. Again, folks who are reputable and even in working with Peter Levine and seeing him work with clients who have got severe, severe trauma, we hear about these things and these stories. And of course, there's many others where people are telling their tale, et cetera, et cetera. So I know that was a bit of a segue, but it's one of those things that classifies as horror, as not being able to imagine, not wanting to look at it, see it, it consider it. However, when we're faced with such information, it is imperative that we stay embodied, that we feel what sparks up internally. We might feel anger, we might feel rage, we might sense huge grief, tears. I did a video a little while ago. Um, I've done a few videos on anger and rage and healthy aggression. I'll post those below. Um, one more recently is some tools that you can use to get some of this intensity out. We don't want it to come back inside. This is where humans get into trouble. We say often, and I've said in some of my earlier videos, and I learned through Peter Levine, the reason why animals in the wild don't end up with PTSD is because usually when they are faced with a severe, severe traumatic event, they usually perish or they get out, they shake it off and they go on, go on like nothing happened. Humans are a little different. We have this higher brain conditioning society, how we were taught to suck it all in, to not express, to not be animals, to not get these cries and expressions out. And I'm here to say, if we don't get this stuff out, we will get sick. It will create more harm and more havoc in our system. It'll mess with our psyche. It'll mess with our immune system, our autonomic nervous system, our gut, everything that connects to that autonomic nervous system. It'll also make us less able to discern real threat when it comes into our uh, life, into you know our, our path, so to speak. So to reel this back, strange topic, I know, this concept of horror, seeing something horrific, the sidekick emotion that might come with this disgust, that sense of this is disgusting and gross, and to, to tell you that the expressions, the feelings, the sensations, big, medium, small, and all the different sizes, whatever it is that you feel and sense is most likely accurate in what you need to sense and express. Of course, my disclaimer here, you never want to harm yourself or other people, children, animals, or even your environment and your stuff. You don't want to harm anything or anyone. We don't want to become violent and abusive when we're getting these emotions out. Think of these emotions 
as medicine. The visceral responses, the cries, the anger, the whatever we might need to do to process, that is essential. We don't want to deny ourselves that. We want to move that out. We want to move that through. Um, I am forever grateful to my clients, uh, my teachers who have given me this information, who have taught me how to be able to see these things, take them in, feel them, sense the grief, the sadness, the anger, the I can't believe this is possible um, qualities and process, move it through so that my system stays health, stays healthy so I can keep helping other folks who want the same. So number one thing, as I said at the very beginning, if you are new here and all this is brand new, thanks for clicking on this video. This was a big one for you to land on. Start with the basics because, and the reason why, when we lack the capacity to even feel the little things and express that little tear or that boundary we need to give to our spouse or our kids or to ourselves, if we if we do not let the tear come out when we're watching an emotional movie, all these things, the little things, if we're not able to work with those little things, little sensations, emotions, when we then see something that is times a million, it will impact us more. So I make this video to say with full sincerity and um, respect to all humans on this planet, get into the basics, start doing this work so that when and if, or if past experiences gave you something that was intense and you know you're still harboring it inside, then when that needs to come up and out, you can, and you can do it safely with connection without harming yourself, others, or the world around you. Again, I've popped resources below this video in the show more section if you're watching this on YouTube. Take those in, do a little bit of the work, get into the work, study this work, study yourself, and let the expressions come out because they will be your medicine. Thank you so much for being here, watching this video, and we'll see you next time.